Hi guys! Ready for another piece of grammar? Is the term for relative clauses. These clauses function as an adjective and they modify a noun. In addition, relative clauses can refer to or give information about the subject or object of a sentence. They can be either defining relative clauses or non-defining relative clauses and we will discuss them later in a few minutes. But remember, we use them to avoid repeating words or combining two clauses. For instance, the documentary was about fashion first class. The second one, it was very interesting. I can join them in just one relative sentence and I can say the documentary which or that was about fashion was very interesting. Anyway, fashion is cheating account holders online, so quite interesting, I would say. Well, before analyzing defining and non-defining relative clauses, I think it's interesting to have a look at the pronouns that we can use with these clauses. So have a look at this chart in which they are classified. If you refer to objects, you use which or that. Those are the websites that or which don't take credit cards. For animals, we use which or that. This is a lion which or that has been ill recently. For persons, we use who or that to talk about people. The man who or that was driving the car was badly injured. In those cases, we translate them in Spanish for que. El hombre que conducía el coche resultó herido. To express possession, we use whose. This is the story of a man whose wife suddenly loses her memory. In Spanish, we translate it for cuyo or cuya or de quien. Whom is also used in very formal contexts and is also used to refer to people. We will deal with it in another video, but let's have an example. This is Juan's cousin with whom I went to school. We can also use when with times and where with places to make it clear which time or place we are talking about. For place, we use where. Stratford upon Avon is the town where Shakespeare was born. Or time. When the Expo 92 was held in 1992. It was the year when I got my degree. Now that you are familiar with the relative pronouns, it's time to distinguish between defining relative clauses and non-defining relative clauses. The first one, defining relative clauses. They are essential and necessary to identify who or what did the action. In fact, you are adding information which is important and without it we would not know what or who we are talking about. If you take out that part of the sentence, that relative clause, then the sentence would not have any sense. Have a look at this example. The body that was found yesterday belonged to an old man. Which was found, we wouldn't know whose body was. Let's have another one with who this time. The doctor who I went to see told me to rest for a few days. Again, the clause I went to see is necessary to know who the doctor is or what doctor I went to visit. Non-defining relative clauses. These clauses, on the other hand, they add non-essential information. It's okay to have it, but we don't need it. It is just extra information. If I take out that extra information, the sentence still has sense, so you use it in a sort of extra information, like in brackets, I would say. Defining relative clause can appear in the middle or at the end of the sentence without any change in meaning. Let's have this example. Paris, which is the city of love, 
is also known as the City of Lights. Paris, which is the City of Lights, is also known as the City of Love. Here you have another example. Alonso's new car, which is predominantly blue, with white and red stripes, represents the French flag. The information about Alonso's car is between commas and is extra, so if you don't mention that relative clause, the sentence would have meaning. There are three main features which must be considered with these non-defining relative clauses. The first one is punctuation. You use commas and they are compulsory. The second one is that you cannot omit the pronoun as we will see in the next video. And the third feature is that you cannot use that in these clauses. Why don't you try? Let's go! Give you a few sentences and you will have to join them using a relative clause. We count on Dave to help us with the reading, so let's give a big round of applause for Dave. Some people hate animals. I don't understand them. The stereo doesn't work properly. I bought it last week. This is the shop. They are selling things half price. Ready for correction? I think you have nailed it. The first one. I don't understand people who or that hate animals. The second one is the stereo. That of which I bought last week doesn't work properly. And the last one, you have two options, so if you have thought about these two, you are right. This is the shop which or that is selling things half price, or this is the shop where they are selling things half price. Would you say they are defining or non-defining relative clauses? Think about it. Right, all of them were defining relative clauses. And on the top of that, you could see that there are no commas there. Also, you can use that in those. So I hope relative clauses are as clear as mud for you now. Leaving aside the fact that grammar can be dull and tiresome, I think relative clauses can be very useful when you start speaking a language and they can be helpful to put your message through. Imagine you can't remember the word pony and you're talking to a native speaker and you say it's a sort of horse which is very small and then the native speaker tells you you mean pony you say that's right so i think they are handy isn't it so do dare to use them and your english will really improve we'll be ready to take another step in the language but again i'm beating around the bush again here you have a chart summarizing the main points that we have dealt in this video to refresh your mind. Keep posted with our videos and more material in our webpage Aprende en Casa Región de Murcia. And remember, there is a second video in which the use of whom and the omission of the relative pronoun will be the stars. Bueno, la teacher se despide y os espera en los próximos videos.